I thank everyone uh, for coming to Digital Domain today for uh, this press conference. Uh, we, we are very happy to uh, be here at Digital Domain with all of the parties at the table. I'd like to introduce everyone at the table so that you know who they are and what they bring to the table. On the far end is Rich Nell Bandian. He is the Assistant Director for the Treasure Coast Sports Commission. Very instrumental in helping to bring this tournament here, these tournaments here. Uh, he's been involved in the baseball world for a very, very long time, over 16 years, six years with, with the Treasure Coast Sports Commission, so he's had plenty of experience. Uh, next to him is Tommy Bowes. The, Tommy, your title goes uh, head groundskeeper to assistant manager to manager. Stadium superintendent. Changes every time. All I know is Tommy is what makes the stadium run. Uh, the gentleman next to him is Paul Taglieri, GM for the St. Lucie Mets and uh, New York Mets. Uh, uh, Paul has been very instrumental in opening up this facility to bring youth tournaments here, and uh, he'll speak to that uh, a little bit later. I'm going to make Tommy retire. You, uh, you can't. <laughs> His hair is oh, already white. I used to have black hair. Uh, <laughs> Next to me is Richard Neely, president of AABC. Uh, and next to me on my left is Joey Ross, uh, Treasure Coast Sports Commission Board President. And next to him is Commissioner Lowry, is the chair of the County Commission and also the, the chair of the TDC. As soon as we have our next meeting. Exactly. <laughs> um, so again, I want to thank you all for, for coming. And, and I think it's important to know that we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the New York Mets. Uh, and I would like Paul to just briefly uh, tell you uh, some of the things that they've done to help us to bring this tournament here. Yeah, when Tom, uh, Tom approached us uh, probably about six months back uh, with uh, you know, AABC and uh, the opportunity to bring these two, two tournaments to Digital Domain Park in St. Lucie County, um, we saw it as an opportunity to showcase our facility to uh, a different demographic, demographic of people and, and you know, bring people to this to this community, which uh, you know we really need at, at the time that these tournaments coming. Uh, you know, everybody knows in the summer how our population decreases in this area, and, and uh, you know we always uh, you know the stadium and, and our, our programs have grown to look uh, to look for other events other than New York Met and St. Louis Met baseball to bring to this uh, to this facility. So we're we're real excited. That, we're real excited about that opportunity. And we're real excited that we had the opportunity to make this happen and come to fruition. Thank you, Paul. Uh, and i got to tell you that we actually drove from Vero Beach to here initially when we did our first site visit. And I'll tell you that, uh, Richard will tell you this later, but he was taking pictures of the stadium. He was so impressed with it. And I'll tell you, we took a ride. Um, we walked out back and we, we ran into Tommy on um, the back fields when he was very busy. And he took about 20 minutes of his time to speak to us. And Tommy, why don't you, you know, just tell us what it means to you and, 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 and how much, how important it is for your staff when we bring these tournaments here. Oh, we're excited. Um, you know, the Don Mattingly Stan Usual to us is names that we've heard about for years, never expecting it to be at our facility. And uh, uh, the way that I expressed it was that I want the kids to be able to come here and, and to be, um, you know, to experience something that, that they'll, you know, that they'll remember for quite some time. And I think that our facility uh, can give them that experience, as we are going to do right now with the high school state championship uh, that's going to be going on. The, the, the looks on their faces, um, it's worth a million. I'm looking forward to putting a lot of smiles on a lot of kids' faces. So we're really happy, and uh, I'm just glad to be part of it. Thank you, Tommy. Uh, and again, if it wasn't for the county commission, and what they do for the Sports Commission and the Tourism uh, Division of the county, we wouldn't be here. The Sports Commission has been in existence since 1999, and St. Lucie County is, is the driving force behind the Sports Commission. It was actually formed through the Parks and Rec Department here um, by a gentleman's name of Jack Downey, and also uh, it was formed due to, the, due to Jimmy Carnes, who was the, the executive director of the Governor's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports. But St. Lucie County was a driving force behind this commission, and there's a reason why it's in existence today. And, and today I was at a, a county commission meeting, and 
I'm very pleased to announce that the county has approved $40,000 in additional funding to help us bring this event here. Um, Todd, I just want to thank you for what you did, and I, I'd, I'd like you to just, I know you're new, and I haven't had a chance to really sit and talk with you uh, other than before, when you, before you were elected, and I'm just pleased you're on board because I know you're a baseball guy. Well, you still are thunder about the forty thousand dollars, but thank you. We're excited, uh, you know, on behalf of the county, we're really thrilled that this is actually going to become a reality this summer. In fact, you know, thinking about these two events, the fact that we're actually able to steal something away from Arizona, I tell you, let's keep bringing things from Arizona back to Florida. We would love to see that happen. We're really excited that uh, we're actually be able to be a part of this. The partnership with the Treasure Coast Sports Commission, the partnership as well with these organizations, to be able to see this come to fruition. It's neat to see, you know, from, from the perspective of the county, knowing what this impact has on our local economy is really excited. The, um, the, the fact that, you know, this had been previously held in Puerto Rico, the tournament, the number of teams that this brings, the number of bedrooms that this is going to provide for our county, we are really excited. Excited about what it means for digital domain, as well as Lawnwood and uh, Lakewood Regional Parks, with the, the fact that tournaments are going to be um, um, holding, both actually have some, some tournaments there. The overall impact, I think, you know, we were looking at some of the numbers earlier, and about $1.75 million is what we were looking at from a hotel, restaurant, local business standpoint as a result of this. That's exciting for our county. That's what we want to see. We want to see teams coming here. We want to see the 3,750 room nights that uh, we're going to see as an impact. All of those things together, I think, will make this a phenomenal event. We know there's a three-year contract. We hear there's a seven-year um, additional on there. We hope this is going to become a long partnership, something that we're going to see for years to come. Thank you, Commissioner. And the Commissioner did jump the gun because we did bid on the 10 and the 12s for Puerto Rico. And I've been given a letter that states if they leave Puerto Rico. That is correct. That's coming here. That is correct. So we've got that commitment. <clears throat> so uh, next I'd like to introduce my board president. Uh, my job is made easier every day because of this man. And uh, we communicate on almost a daily basis. I think I'm going to be getting a fee pretty soon because he is an attorney. So every time I call, I know there's dollar signs going there somewhere. So at the end of my tenure, I'm sure he's going to collect from me somehow. Yeah, the, uh, it, my, my time sheet is full with uh, Tom's phone calls. But uh, I have to say that the Treasure Coast Sports Commission is thrilled to be hosting 3 of the 12 World Series for ABC. Uh, it's, it's my honor today to introduce you to Richard Neely, the president of AABC. Uh, Richard is the fifth president of this organization. This organization started in 1935. And so, Richard, welcome to the Treasure Coast, and uh, I you. hope this is a mutually beneficial uh, tournament for both of us. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. I'm not that old, I promise, but uh, it's, uh, we do have some pretty good tenure with our presidents all the way back to uh, Lincoln Hackham. For some of you old baseball people, he was actually commissioner for the MLB for a time. But uh, we're very, very excited to be here at Treasure, with Treasure Coast as well as the uh, Mets facility, Digital Domain. We're bringing here our youngest World Series and our oldest World Series. Uh, Don Mattingly, uh, it's, this will be the seventh year we've had that age group at 17 year olds and 17 and under. Uh, it will be very, very exciting because there should be a lot of not only Major League Scouts, but College Scouts. They're going to be all over this tournament because these are typically juniors in high school. And this is when they want to really see them playing some good baseball and competitive baseball. Uh, the other tournament, uh, Stan Musial, is our oldest division and it's basically 19 and older. So you may see junior college kids, and you may see retired 40-year-old Major League pitchers. A few years ago, I saw a guy that was 43 years old who no hitter in the Stan Musial World Series. He was unbelievable, and he uh, was having a great time striking out with 18-year-old kids. This guy played in the majors for 12 years, and he was hitting a rapid 65 miles an hour. They couldn't hit him. They couldn't hit him at all. But that World Series has been on for over 60 years. How desirable for a city is it to have something like this come to you? Well, one thing that I saw, um, I, I've been to a not Richard's That's tournament, but I, I won't tell you who it is, but it's a very well-known tournament for 14s. It was in Winchester, uh, Virginia. And these, and Richard will tell you about it in the Mexico tournament, that the teams stayed with families, host families. So the players would stay with the host families. Well, 
went, I went to, to try and get a hotel room late, and I was lucky I got the last room. But there were no hotel rooms in Winchester or in the whole county. So, you know, you were having the players stay with the families and the other players, which was really neat because now you got guaranteed gate. You got people that are going to come, they're going to watch the, the, uh, the, the adopted uh, player play. So it didn't hurt the economic impact or the heads and beds. And it's just, this has been going on in Winchester for at least seven years that I know of. Uh, and, in, and Richard will tell you his experience in New Mexico. Right. In, in Farmington, New Mexico, we have the County Mac World Series. This year will be the 48th straight year. We have a foster parent program. And uh, immediately, immediately the impact was you're taking people out of motel rooms. Actually, it worked the reverse. It filled the motels up because their parents and visitors and scouts and so forth that would come in, and it packed the stadium. And it's a week-long tournament. We'll run 100,000 people through that. And it's a town of 45,000 people. So it's very, very similar to what we have here in the county as well as the cities. And you get local involvement. And you get those parents. Uh, we can go back. to the ABC is fortunate in that we have provided the most major league players that have made the big show, okay? We don't count minors, but the major league, nothing personal, okay? <laughs> but, and, and we're very fortunate, and today, those parents in Farmington are still getting birth announcements, graduation announcements, marriage invitations from those kids that play in Farmington. So it creates an unbelievable environment for your local town. It's a great thing, a great thing. Where exactly were these events before? You mentioned Arizona. Right. right. The uh, Don Mattingly was held in Surprise, Arizona, at the uh, Texas Rangers facility, and the uh, Stan Musial was held in Houston, Texas, for five years. For five years. And you know, one thing I'll tell you that we talked about this and it was brought up earlier today. Arizona is pretty hot. It is. And Texas is even hotter and more humid. Uh, and, and they talk about coming here, and, and I tell this all the time, this story all the time, that you couldn't come to a better place in Florida. We have the tropical breeze that blows. It blows warm in the, in the winter and cool in the summer. I'm selling the area, but it works. And, and go to Atlanta, go to Charlotte, go to Houston, go, go to Richmond, go to any of those cities in the summer and play baseball, and it's hot and humid. 21 miles of beaches, 11,000 acres of environmental preserves. You combine it all together, it makes a perfect environment. Richard, why, why would you want to come here? What, what was it that made you want to Well, obviously, the Sports Commission itself, the willingness to work together to make a great event, uh, the facilities. He's lying. He's li let, me, let, me stop, let me stop him right now. The reason that they came here, you really need to understand this, that they looked at Vero Beach Sports Village because it was the Dodgers, it was Sandy Koufax, it was, and we're going to hold the World Series there, which we announced, announced earlier. They were excited about that. But when we took the trip down the digital domain, he couldn't stop taking pictures. He loves this facility. I mean, he was, we walked the facility, we toured it, and we got all through, we took more pictures. I, I think you were impressed with the facility. I was impressed with the facility, and there's hands down. And we, and we played a lot of great facilities throughout the United States, but, you know, to bring a high school kid into this environment as you're doing with the state tournament, I mean, their, their eyes, as you said, it's amazing. Maybe the only chance they'll ever in their lives get to step foot on that field. And believe me, as an old baseball player, I always dreamed of staying on one of these fields. And you don't get that opportunity. So that's something we provide for. And, uh, you know, the ABC, we're, I'm not going to press a little bit on the Dodgers, but we have four of our divisions named after former Dodgers. So we're still working on the Mets. We, we do have one. Uh, that I can't, it's unofficial. We're working on the paperwork. It's been approved. But our 13-year-old division will be named the Nolan Ryan division. So that ties in. That ties in. So. It's not going to be named Tom Blucci or... <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he tried to pay me, but I wouldn't let him, you know. <laughs> and you said the Don Mattingly, this is the seventh year? The seventh year, yes. Stan Musial is over 60 years old. It's one of the reasons that we really worked hard on this. It was a credible organization that's been around for a long time. We've been looking for a partnership like this since 1999. Uh, if you look at our logo, I don't know, where, where's our logo, Al? Okay, well, there's a banner back here. If you look at our logo, we changed our logo, and you'll look at the, the second part of the logo, the picture is a baseball. 
you know, we changed that two years ago because we felt that we have the opportunity to move forward as a destination for baseball tournaments. We've been working on it for a long time. We've done a lot of softball, done a lot of soccer. We've done, you know, baseball and we've done showcases, but nothing to this magnitude. We did one year back in 2004. We brought a national tournament here, and it, and it, and it fizzled. Not here, it just fizzled all around. It was a new tournament that was it was trying to get started with a named player but this has been around for if you look at their history and you look at the you know what their profile is and what they've done they've been around a long time and they they tend to create a partnership with the community and 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 make it grow and 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 they want to be here so we want them we want to have a partnership that extends beyond the three years and we're hoping to do much more uh, and again, I can't thank uh, the Mets enough. Uh, I've been had an office in this facility since 1999, and when Paul came here, things changed. Uh, he really changed this facility. If you look at the sponsors, you look at what he's done here, if you look at what where the stadium has come since the first day he walked in the door, it, it's totally different than what it was back in 99, 98. I'm not your boss, Tom. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, appreciate what you do. Well, I mean, there's a couple of costs here that, that, again, we bid against other cities, and Richard will tell you what, in Puerto Rico they spend. spend well, the government of Puerto Rico, we have two World Series here, and the government gives them $300,000 to host those two organizations. Part of the expenses that the bid fee covers, go, and Richard, you can address this better than I can, the bid fee goes to help pay for the it, teams. 100% of it goes towards travel incentives, okay, for the teams. Uh, we, we give them a specific amount of money and also some money towards our motel rooms. I mean, it's not it's not a profit center for me, believe me. It all goes right out the door. And the money that it costs us, whatever it costs us to run a six-day tournament at either facility, it's the cost for the grounds crew, it's the cost for the, you know, the fields, the lights, uh, all that's included. Um, no, no, it's it, 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 the, the twenty thousand of each goes to Double ABC to help bring the teams here in the bid. In the bid, it's kind of like law enforcement when we bid on police and fire. It was a fifty thousand dollar bid fee to bring it here. Um, so the bid fee is to attract it away from another city. It'll, it'll cost us somewhere around eight to nine thousand dollars for each tournament for the expenses to run it. Any other questions? No other questions? I guess thank you for coming and uh, we'll stick around and introduce everybody in case you want to meet.
all for coming to this press conference to announce the FHSAA softball finals are coming to Vero Beach, Forts Village, and the city of Vero Beach and Indian River County. We're excited to, uh, to have the finals coming here. I'm going to have Peter O'Brien say a few words, who is county commissioner. Thank you. First, I'd like to welcome everybody here to Vero Beach Sports Village, and you can see in the background Holman Stadium behind me, and so we're, we're excited to be bringing more uh, uh, baseball and softball events here to the sports complex. And I want to speak a little bit just on kind of how important this is to the entire community. And a lot of folks, a lot of organizations had to work together to make this happen. We have the Treasure Coast Sports Commission, obviously, which was a, a, a big um, player in, in getting this secured for the county. We have the city of Vero Beach, Sebastian River High School, the county, and of course the Florida High School Athletic Association, uh, and, and our, our friends here at Vero Beach Sports Village. Everybody pulled together, and even our, our hotel folks, you know, we have the Marriott here in Best Western, and they all had to kind of say, yeah, we're, we want to make this happen, and we're going to do things to make it uh, come here to Indian River County. And, you know, Tom said the, the girls' softball finals, and, and I don't think everybody really knows what that means, but what it means is 32 teams, there's eight divisions in Florida girls' softball, all eight finals will be played here at the new quad fields of Vero Beach Sports Village. So that's 32 teams will be coming to our community. There will be 32 um, teams, 600 players, coaches, and a lot of families will be coming here to see Indian River County, to see what we have to offer. And so this is going to be a great opportunity for us to showcase what a wonderful community we have here, the quality of life we have, the kind of a, a family-friendly destination we are. And the, the other thing is it's a three-year contract. So not only will it be uh, next spring, but the following two as well. So we're really looking forward to this. want to thank all of the partners that have worked real hard uh, to make this happen and we're just looking forward to using those new fields and uh, getting the girls out there playing some softball so thank you all thank you Peter um, and again to Peter's left I just want to introduce uh, some of the people that helped make this happen um, the county administrator Joe Baird thank you Joe for all your support uh, to his left uh, at the end is Michael Zito, the assistant county administrator, who's been very influential and, and very important to us when it comes to negotiating contracts like this. Uh, we receive our funding from the bed tax, and the county is the one that uh, it, it enforces that. And Michael and Joe have been very supportive of us, along with the county commission. We thank them very much. Well, thank, thank you. Very much. Thank you. And, uh, what I'd like to do at this time is this: this couldn't happen without without the uh, without the school district being involved and and Sebastian River High School is going to be the host school and I'd like to introduce Michael Stutsky who's the AD and also he is the vice president of the Treasure Coast Sports Commission thanks uh, thank you Tom I think anytime you can bring uh, organizations together with a, a common good a common goal a common cause uh, and get something as positive as, as this event is. Uh, it just shows that what partnering really is all about. Uh, the School District of Indian River County is obviously very proud to be part of, uh, of this event for the next three years, and Sebastian River High School is a host school. But it is about our youth, and that's our future, and I think we all can agree that what young people get out of organized sport is extremely important. To have state championship caliber play in Indian River County is great, to utilize an outstanding facility such as uh, Vero Beach Sports Village and the overall partnering in general. It's just win-win. And the fact that we uh, are able to work with the Florida High School Athletic Association, uh, the governing body of high school sports here in the state of Florida, for a three-year contract, uh, obviously we want to do an outstanding job from the school's perspective uh, with the anticipation of, of future years and, and future events. Thank you, Michael. And again, uh, Michael has been very supportive of any events that we put on in Indian River County, and uh, we thank him uh, for his continued support. They'll be an integral part of the volunteer base for this event. Uh, I'd also like to tell you that Vero Beach Sports Village is the reason we're here. It's the reason it's in Indian River County and not in Martin or St. Lucie or in any other county in the state of Florida. Vero Beach Sports Village has become a major player when it comes to baseball and now softball. 
Uh, it will be a destination uh, this coming winter uh, and spring for college and high school softball <coughs> spring training. So we, we're very pleased that Vero Beach Sports Village has stepped up to the plate and decided that it would be the home for FHSAA for the next three years. And, and I'd like to introduce uh, Craig Callen, Vice President of Operations, to just say a few words about this magnificent facility. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I heard a couple of words uh, from uh, uh, our county commissioner about working together. I've heard it from uh, Michael Stutsky about uh, common good partners. Uh, I think that's what it's all about. Um, without the county and the city working together with uh, Vero Beach Sports Village, that facility that's bringing in this uh, uh, great state softball finals would not happen. It took a lot of work and crossing the lines, nonpartisan to, uh, to get it done. Uh, and uh, Vero Beach Sports Village is very uh, pleased and proud to have that. Um, we do see that as an integral part of our growth. Um, it's made us very, very much opened up uh, multi-sport, uh, multi-gender, uh, which is very important to us. Um, and talking about partners and talking about relationships, uh, we have a gentleman over here who I'm, I'm jumping the gun on him, but uh, Dale Klaus, who's uh, with Florida High School Sports Athletic Association, Dodger Town, Vero Beach Sports Village, ex uh, graduate of uh, Dodger Town Elementary. Dale and I go back from the days when uh, we were putting up globes at Dodger Town Elementary and working with the students. So it goes to show you that uh, our roots run deep, and um, we're extremely pleased to be working uh, with Dale again. Uh, who's come down, and of course, Rich Nalbandian, who is with Treasure Coast Sports Commission and works with Tom, he also is a Dodger Town Vero Beach Sports Village graduate. So once again, our, our roots are all over. Um, we enjoy our relationship with the county, the city, uh, Treasure Coast Sports Commission, and uh, it's, as Michael said, it's a win-win. Thank you, Craig. At this time, I, I would also like to introduce my assistant director, uh, Rich Nelbandian, who, who will be the event coordinator uh, and working very closely with Dale. Uh, I'd like Rich to give you uh, his, his uh, interpretation of, of what he expects you to see when, when these teams come here. Well, again, thank you everyone for coming today. It's an extreme honor. Uh, just to be able to work with everybody up here and all the community. It's just, I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm trembling right now. It's so great. I mean, uh, everyone working together is a special thing that normally doesn't happen in places. And I can tell you, everybody was 1000% behind this and going forward and excited about bringing 32 of the best teams in the state of Florida here to play and to showcase the facility and more importantly, showcase our community. Our community is everything to us. We want people to come and see what we have to offer in our county here and to say, wow, this is special. And guess what? We want to come back and visit as a visitor as, and come back for future tournaments. We have the best facilities here. So it's really opened up the door for what we're doing right now. And we're all excited about it. And I'm humbled to be the event manager of this event. And I'm excited about reaching out to the community and getting people to come out and attend it and just feel a part of this thing and it's it's real exciting so i just want to say thank you and i'm looking forward to working closely with everyone in the near future thank you thanks rich uh, and at this time uh, i'd like to uh, introduce dale klaus from the fhsaa to say a few words yes thank you thank you all very much and thank for attending uh, for attending today a couple of things from the from the state level when we take a look at bids for hosting statewide events that are so massive, um, we focus on um, a first-class event for our students, first of all. Um, when Treasure Coast um, Sports Commission uh, put their bid in, I was excited about it. I'm from Vero Beach. That's not why we're here, but I'm from Vero Beach, and I know everybody at this table. Um, like Mr. Callan mentioned, we go back many, many, many years. I know what a first-class facility this is. I know our girls from around the state will be treated in a first-class manner and will have, I mean, this is the kind of event 
that the girls remember uh, for life. And, and it's important that we do a, uh, just a first class operation here. When the committee looked at the, um, at the, at the bid, you look at the, the team that Treasure Coast Sports Commission put together, it's incredible. When you have county administrators and you've got a sports commission as quality as Treasure Coast and you have a facility and you've got a school like Sebastian River High that's going to host it and a facility like Sports Village, uh, you're not going to get any better. So we're very, very excited on behalf of the Florida High School Athletic Association to be coming here um, in May. So we're very excited. Thank you. Thank you, Dale. I'd just like to wrap it up with a few comments. We're, we're very excited that this event is coming to Indian River County and, and Vero Beach. Uh, we've hosted many high school championships in other areas, and we're, we're looking forward to this one. It's a brand new facility. Uh, it, it captures what the spirit of what this village is trying to promote, uh, and, and it's going to offer some of the best softball that you'll ever see in the state of Florida. So again, we're excited that it's coming here, and we hope that it'll come back another three years. We have an option for three more uh, after the first three. So at this time, I'll open it up uh, to any questions. I know a state baseball financial, the financial package was kind of an issue uh, as far as the amount of gate receipts the FHSA is hoping to get back. How did that work out for this? Well, we offered 100% uh, of the gate receipts back for softball. Because of the team that we put together and the costs uh, that were, were being implemented, it was nowhere near the, the cost of state baseball. So we were able to put a package together uh, and able to offer the state their 100% ticket revenue. Can, can I make a comment on that also? Um, the 100% that, that we ask all of our uh, venues for and all of our events, that money goes directly back to the students and the schools that, that attend the event. I think that's, that's very, very important that it, the money goes back to the students, basically the athletes that participate. So that's important, the travel, yeah. The travel, the motel, the food per diem and all that. So based on any comparable events, how much revenue are you talking about? Well, I run golf and we don't charge at golf. So I don't know. I don't have you know. I, I don't have numbers in front of me that can tell you that uh, the difference in that. Uh, I know. I know Tom has been has hosted several events. Might be able to answer that better than well, I. But. I think softball. They had somewhere around 4,700. Uh, it's it's averaged uh, anywhere from uh, 4,000 to 6,000 uh, for the event, and it's nine dollars. So I mean. You, figure out the revenue stream. Yeah, when you talk about attendance, it, it all depends on who qualifies for the event itself. Right. I mean, if you've got teams that are that are local, a lot of times you'll get, you'll get bigger attendance. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we're averaging 47 to 6,000. So you're looking at revenue somewhere between 45 and 50,000? What makes softball less, is it that it's less expensive to run, or you mentioned the partnerships? Like, is there there's a couple of things. In, in, in state baseball, uh, the expenses were, were well over uh, you know, 60,000, I think. Our, our take was 32,000, and uh, the high school association got 50% of the ticket sales. Um, but the cost of the stadium, the cost of, of running the event in, in digital domain, uh, it was just more expensive. It was at least twice as much uh, of an expense to run baseball. And baseball was eight days instead of four because we weren't running multiple games at, at the same time on the semis. So it actually took more time, and they had to uh, close the stadium down for a longer period of time. So that's, uh, that's the reason for the difference in the costs. Well, it's also because, you know, with Treasure Coast Sports Commissions stepping up and the fact that the county built uh, a great facility like this uh, for us to, to manage. Uh, we looked at it as a, a win for the community. So unlike a tournament that we would run ourselves, or we might even have what we call a plug and play, like this weekend, where um, we would charge a gate, um, it was worth it to us to have uh, the state finals for the girls softball come here and for us to defer that type of revenue. So. Um, good for the community, fills hotel rooms, um, 
we'll do fine. We have concessions, uh, but everyone had to give a little to get a lot. So then are the costs of running it all on Beer Sports Village, or is it shared then? It's it shared costs. Cost. Shared costs. We're working together. Um, is it normally a three-year contract, or is that... Is that how you guys are doing it now? This, we put the RFP up for softball for a three-year contract. A lot of our big events, we like to go for three years. Is it, um, that first year, when you go to a new venue, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. Rich, Rich has his hands full. Uh, with our first year, we're going to be here. I'll be here a lot and, uh, to organize that first year. Down, at, down at, the, in, at the baseball finals, I mean, it was, it was just smooth running down there because they had run it for so many years. And I mean, everybody you know, knew exactly what they were doing and how many volunteers you need and practice schedules and all that. So uh, yeah, typically, to answer your question, typically we like to do a three year. Some of our other sports we do, we do less. You know, like our golf contract was a two year with a possible one year extension, that kind of thing, so. Where are you at, Claremont? Did you go to the finals there? I stopped by there last year for a little bit. We ran out of programs. Can That's you comment just on how this facility compares? Well, it's, it's different. Um, Claremont had, had a, a stadium that was, uh, a small stadium that was built in the center of a couple other fields. Um, this, this format, since we went to a, a two games, semifinal games, and we cut the event to a four day event, um, we wanted a complex that had four quality fields like you see here at, at the Sports Village. I mean, you're not gonna get any better in these four, um, this complex, as far as doing the format that we would like to do this year. So, uh, and th this is different uh, for softball having the semis, and then we're going, we de we're going to declare one field as uh, our championship field, and we're setting up some bleachers in the outfield, make it look like a stadium with the bleachers in the outfield and that kind of thing. So we're real excited about it. You want to fire away some more along? <laughs> uh, do you have any uh, idea of, like, how many hotel rooms you might be able to get out of this, or is there? I, I mean, uh, Go ahead. I, I, I don't know, but 600, you know, individuals all come in, and, you know, uh, I know from my personal experience and our other family members, you know, they, they travel well. The mom and dad usually will come, and sometimes grandma and grandpa, and what we, what we really like here in Indian River County is we have a lot of different price point hotels. Um, you know, we have uh, several out there by the interstate that are one price point. Then we have some like Marriott that are near the ocean but not, not on it, so their prices are kind of moderate. And then we have some really nice, you know, hotels and stuff and on the beach. And then we have a lot of different variety up in North County. Um, you can, you know, if, if the folks are looking for a resort thing, you have Captain Hiram's, you have Best Western. So there's a lot of different price points. Um, and so when the families do come, they they have a lot of options of where they want to stay. And historically. Um, you know, we have seen that these type of events, the, the hotels are full. And, and of course, we're having uh, one of our better uh, tourist tax uh, years this year. And I think a lot of it has to do with the sports tourism that we're bringing in. And uh, they, they, again, they travel well. And one of the neat things we have them here at the quad is we just had a, um, a boys tournament and the, the nine and unders and 10 and unders were playing at the, the quad field. And one thing about having four games going on simultaneously, there's always some crowd noise going. You know, you, you can sit here and watch a game here and there's a lot of dead time in between a pitch or, you know, something happening. But on a quad field, almost every game, you know, it almost is like a constant noise going and it really just builds the, the excitement because you're watching the game and all of a sudden you hear a big roar over there and well, what happened there and you can take a quick look and so, so there's a lot of momentum when you have a quad like that and it's really um, it's just a lot of activity just builds the, the excitement of being there and watching watching the game so it's kind of neat. Yeah, I, mean, I think we'll have to see in the first year obviously uh, we've done girls softball hosted events before with travel baseball and the room nights, depending on the event we do, uh, I think it's a 60 team tournament and it's a three day event. We can generate up to 1200 to 1500 room nights. But again, we'll have to see. Uh, and as Dale said, it depends on who's traveling and, 
and uh, what teams are traveling. And that's the other thing, too. We're looking for the local community to come out and watch this. So we're going to promote this heavily. We want the community to come out and experience some of the best softball in the state. Uh, and it's exciting softball. And the timing, or first part of May, I mean, that's a starting the distress period for the hotel community and the restaurants. So I think that's a big charge. I'll be a little energizer because they check in on Tuesday night and they're in. It's not just a weekend event, you know. So it's, it makes it a real nice event that people are really going to get excited for and, and participate. And when it comes down to Rome nights, I mean, there could be projections anywhere from 700 up, depending on which teams come from what areas and what kind of following they have at each of the schools. So, I mean, it could, it could really mushroom up if, it, uh, if there's a lot of those teams out there, which there are. Girls travel, what we've seen in our, like as Tom has mentioned, in our experiences, they just come in groups. I mean, the commissioners saw that last weekend with the, the younger boys, too. They just bring a whole bunch of people with them. So it's real, it's real neat. So, so with that seven to 800 uh, rooms, that you're thinking that that many actual hotel rooms occupied for four nights, or a total? Total of, of total of, of, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And the host hotels, uh, Spring Hill is the, is the host hotel along with Vero Beach Sports Village. Um, the teams in FHSAA will have headquarters at both, both locations. And then we will have other hotels obviously on the list for the teams and the parents because they, they all can't stay at these two facilities. There's just not enough room. Tom, I think you'll also have a, um, a nice impact on day visitors. The, the, you know, the, the teams are um, scattered throughout Florida. Uh, how many counties will be represented? 67. All 67 we'll counties will be there. represented. And the format of the tournament really lends itself to um, uh, competitive interest. What you essentially have is eight Final Four tournaments. So by the time these teams arrive at the Vero Beach Sports Village, they will already have accomplished a great deal mm -hmm. uh, in their season's um, uh, success and then the best of the best will play off in eight separate final fours and eight separate uh, division champions will be crowned so uh, it's going to be something you know it should generate local interest and interest from um, our neighboring counties as well for day trips anything else well thank you hey, Tom. Yes. just a side note while we have you guys here right underneath you we have the sk wyverns practicing practicing with us now uh, if you were here this weekend, you would have seen the youth baseball and the Wyverns. So you go from a professional baseball team to the uh, to the young few players of the future. Uh, they woke up this morning at 5 a.m. Uh, because they watched their major league team who trained with us in November and January of, of last year. So we were their training facility. They're in their World Series. They, they qualified for the uh, uh, Korean World Series this morning. So multi-sport but uh, we're real proud that we're able to be kind of like a chameleon we can switch from one sport to another and uh, just thought I'd bring that up because you might see some uh, players while you're exiting and then just to, to finalize everything that this is a premier facility it is the premier facility on the Treasure Coast um, we, we can promote this facility 365 days out of the year and it is multi-sport um, They've had anything here from professional soccer to professional football to college football to, to baseball. International teams have been here. Uh, minor league baseball does their training here for umpires. It's just a great facility, and, and it is, it is multi-purpose in, in the best sense, even better than our partners uh, can imagine to the south. Um, it, it, it's helping the whole Treasure Coast. Uh, it helps us to promote baseball, now softball, and it really is bringing a lot of the teams in spring training that were going to Central Florida and, and, and Southwest Florida, and even south of us in Palm Beach are starting to come here. So we're, we're excited about Vero Beach Sports Village and what it has to offer. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.